Hi, so welcome. We're here to talk to you all about a new fabric that we will be discussing in depth. Have you ever imagined a fabric that you could even wear on your sleeve that could power your phone? Well, this new groundbreaking fabric will be breaking barriers in energy conservation and in creating energy that's more sustainable and easy to use. Let's begin. So this fabric in nature is a new type of text uh, that can generate electricity from two different clean uh, sources of power. Um, it can generate from from body motion or from like from the wind, from motion of body or from the wind, as well as from the sun. Uh, the research was conducted by George Tech professors, and it's made of readily available materials such as wool and polymers, so it should be easy to mass produce and inexpensive as well. Uh, it's very thin; it's only 320 micrometers thick. That's less than half a grain of salt, which makes it convenient for industries or for apparel companies to just weave it into their normal other kinds of fabric with no big hassles or for the customers who wear them too. It's also very resistant to harsh use conditions. You could even put them on some industrial machines or heavy machinery that involves a lot of motion like that to recover some energy, potentially saving some, some millions of dollars in energy costs, especially if it applies in large scale industries. And at the same time, if you put it in April, it's flexible, breathable, and lightweight. So it has a lot of promising qualities that make it very available to industries. Uh, on the on this next slide, we have some we have some graphs that demonstrate the continuous powerability of the of this fabric. You can see it in three different conditions: with light only, light and vibration, dark and vibration. You can see the peaks in each of them. You can see this is the proof that it works in all those conditions. Uh, and on the, on the three colorful graphs here, the blue, red, and black ones, they show the difference between if it were just a photovoltaic, which we'll discuss in depth what it is in later slides, if it were just turboelectric, which is which are the two means in which the fabric works, and the total output of those combined. It's better than just having the tool isolated, and it shows that they both work together. Uh, and the interesting fact about this continuous power generation is that it's not just a theoretical concept. You can actually use it to power anything from capacitors to cell phones to charge your phones or to wristwatch, everything, with just like something as small as bracelets that you can just wear around and have it be powered by your own motion and by the sun, wind, and so on. Hi, so my name is Maria Ramos, and I would just like to give you a little bit of background information on how this fabric was made. Um, so it was originally made by Professor Zongli Wang, who is a professor at the School of Material Science and Engineering at Georgia Tech. He specializes in nanotechnology and energy science. In order to create this new fabric that uses motion and sunlight uh, to power devices, um, a standard textile machine was used. The textile machine used triboelectric nanogenerators. Now, most of you are asking, what are triboelectric nanogenerators? Um, triboelectric <coughs> nanogenerators use organic materials that convert um, mechanical energy into electricity using everyday materials such as papers and fabrics that are eco friendly. The triboelectric nanogenerator uses the triboelectric effect and electrostatic induction. The triboelectric effect is when certain materials become electrically charged uh, when they come into contact with different materials. So basically, it's using friction to create electricity. And as most of you probably know, electrostatic induction is a way to generate static electricity by bringing an electrically charged object near it. All of this combined creates a small amount of electrical power just by moving every day or by wind on a flag or any type of motion. Now we've covered the um, motion part of it, so the light part of it, um, light, uh, sunlight uh, energy is not something that's very new. Um, it's been around for a while now. So the way it works is that the fabric generates sunlight. Energy using sunlight is through uh, photoanodes. Photoanodes are electrodes of cells or other electrically polarized devices through which a positive current electricity flows in 
words. These photo anodes are made in a wire-shaped fashion that can be woven together using the commercial textile machine. So the photo anodes are woven together with the tribal electric nanogenerators. Um, with the tribal electric nanogenerators and the photo nodes all woven together, a fabric that uses motion and light to power device is very durable. So now you've heard what this fabric is, what its nature, all the science behind it. The real reason why all of you are sitting in this room today. Why is this product or why is this fabric important to you guys? It's very simple. This fabric is really important to our future. Like if you look at it right now, a lot of emphasis is being put on clean energy policies, solar farms, wind far farms, hydroelectric, geothermal, all these clean energy forms. And this fabric is again on the same concept. It creates electricity from clean forms such as solar and wind. Uh, solar and wind farms do need a lot of space and they, ha they have high installation costs, the solar panels and windmills. So what else does this product do? It adds, a new it adds a new dimension to products made of fabric. For example, let's take the tent. You're out camping with your family, and as, of, as all of you know right now, you probably have one laptop, one tablet, one phone, and these need to be charged. There's probably gonna be no power outlet in the woods stuck in a tree somewhere, so how would you charge this? Power banks, yes, that's an option, but will they last the whole trip? Maybe not. Imagine if your tent was made of this fabric that could create electricity just by the sun or by any wind. The next product, uh, sports apparel. You know everyone likes to, when they run or jog, they like to listen to music. You see a lot of people running with headphones in their ears listening to some sort of music. And that music is played from either their smartphone or an MP3 music player. Again, or if they run out of battery. Imagine clothes that can create their own electricity. Like 20 years ago, if you said clothes that create their own electricity, that would attract, that would be so unbelievable and still unbelievable today, but we're telling you, it can happen. And a really hypothetical case. Imagine every household being self-sufficient in their own energy use. Hypothetically speaking, and this might be a far long time away, curtains that create electricity just when the sun hits them. Imagine schools hoisting their country flag, their school flag, their state flag, and that creates electricity, providing the whole school with energy. It's a really big step to solving our world's energy crisis. So, what is a major problem with the environment and energy? Fossil fuels. Yes, they do give us a lot of electricity, a lot of energy. They pollute the environment, they lead to effects such as the greenhouse effect, they lead to global warming, all these terms which just mean that the environment's being harmed. So, what does this fabric do to harm the environment? Absolutely nothing. The only thing it produces like, is electricity. Nothing harmful, no byproducts. So, Technically, we are striving to empower every single individual to be able to, to be able to satiate their own electricity needs. Imagine that. Imagine no government organizations producing a large population with energy, but instead an individual being self-sufficient in their energy needs. This, these, this transition might seem very impossible, improbable, but we're here to dream big. No one got anywhere by dreaming well dreaming small or aiming low, and the only people who make a change are people who dream big. Okay, so I'll be discussing with you the next steps and future work of this ingenious new technology. While the fabric is not very susceptible to being ripped or torn, we've acknowledged that this might be a short-term upside, and so we have lead researchers that are presently looking into the fabric having a long-term dur durability. It can be anticipated that with the right material engineering, the energy fostering cloth will be able to last years and give its user the greatest and best use. The longevity will be of something that's practically imperishable. Also in bettering our product, our project is focusing on optimizing the fabric for industrial uses, including in developing the proper encapsulation to protect the electrical components from rain and moisture. We understand that if the fabric is on something that gets dirty, 
you don't need to wash it. You don't need to put it in the washing machine, dry it, take it out, or whatever. And so it needs to be able to function after being wet. We also understand that if you're wearing it in clothes, you might be sweating on it, and again, it's wet. And so we both realize that we all realize in both cases, this fabric needs to be waterproof. And we plan on implementing such an attribute quite soon. This fabric is our future, so don't miss out on being a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Before we end, does anyone have any questions from the perspective of an investor or a company or just an English 1101 student? From the perspective of a potential investor, you say that the fabric does not create any waste, but what about the production of the fabric? Um, does not even the process to produce it, which involves, I'm sure, some sophisticated technology, I'm sure harvesting of resources, how have you accounted for what's going to actually um, go into the production of the fabric itself? This fabric, like you mentioned, we definitely acknowledge that this fabric will take up some production and definitely some waste. But my intention was to say that the fabric producing the electricity, that process is completely waste-free. Yes, we account for the fact that fabric might have some wastage when you're producing the wires, and we're still striving because we are the, we are representatives of Georgia Tech. So, when this if this product moves to say a factory or research, we will definitely collaborate with them to find a cleaner, a more efficient way of producing this fabric because our lines are our focus is clean energy. If you send it to a factory that says uh, violates all clean energy policies, we are definitely not we're not willing to work. Yeah. Realistically, how much power can be generated? Like a sufficient amount to eventually replace fossil fuels? Because I know a lot of like these like eco-friendly like ways to generate energy don't generate like nearly as much. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, the images in the study that we published, like in that graph, or in that slide with the graphs, uh, showed you like that there were there was a capacitor. And I don't know, something that's like two by two inches or a bit more than that was already able to char uh, not only power but charge a phone, which already has its own internal resistance and so on. So if a two by two inch of that in a kind of a dark condition, only with motion, was already able to power a phone, if you improve the research, if you make it large scale, then you probably can also use it to recover energy from, from industries that use a lot of motion and so on. One point I'd like to add on that is that when we propose this fabric as something that would produce clean energy, we're not prophesizing, we're not hypothesizing a like for like replacement. You're not gonna have farms of this fabric laid out or you know, say a wind farm would. We're trying to make people be self-sufficient in their own energy use. So hypothetically speaking, it might be a long way. It is possible if people will be, it is possible for people to be self-sufficient to run their own houses on their own produced electricity. Yes, like if only one house had the curtains with the fabric, it probably wouldn't be enough. But what if every house in the neighborhood had it and they were all on the same grid? Then maybe the offsets from one could go into another. And that would be kind of a distributed power. Yes. Um, do you think that this technology could be used on the um, like rocket ships that are going to Mars? Because it's a long journey. Anything like this power from the sun could like power that rocket, maybe like in the future? Maybe, I mean, the fabric would, hypothetically speaking, the fabric would have to be extremely resistant. So to like heat. Right. So like, obviously if you're shooting a rocket in space, there's a lot of factors you have to take in. I mean, I guess <laughs> if you're if you're SpaceX and you're willing to invest in this, we'd be happy to have you. <laughs> we'd not sure. on the outside, but we'd be able to power the internal mechanisms. Yeah, yeah like the internally, not on the imagine. outside. Maybe. Line. It could, like like we said, this product is still in the de development stage. All inputs would be highly appreciated, whether it was money or wisdom. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes? Is it expensive? What would the package be? Do you want to type? <laughs> we addressed the expense part in the first slides. It's only made of wool and polymers, so it should not be expensive. At all. And once it scales, once it's more mass produced, it should be even less expensive than it is as of now. And it already is not expensive now, so it should be even less so in the future. So if I was an investor, I'd feel it's a safe investment. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, 
Any other questions? Let's have a round of applause. Thank you.